Hello everybody. wanted to give a video review of the Voltaic Systems Arc 8 8 watt monocrystalline folding solar panel. Uh, this is a fairly new offering from Voltaic. There's not a whole lot of information about these so I wanted to uh, kind of share what I've experienced over the last couple days with it. The uh, system is relatively thin, relatively lightweight. Snaps shut. Opens to expose two uh, monocrystalline solar panels there. You can get an idea of the size. It features a single USB output that's regulated to 5 volts DC. Uh, maximum output is 1.4 amps or 1400 milliamps. That's under optimal conditions. Uh, likely conditions are gonna gonna vary a little bit. I chose this particular panel for two reasons. One is that regulated output uh, that keeps the the charging voltage uh, at five volts, and um, hopefully by sizing this panel um, above an amp, um, I can at least keep devices charging. Voltaic lists on here that you can charge one of their storage batteries or you can do direct to panel uh, device charging which some other panels have a tr have trouble with because they don't provide a regulated uh, DC output. The uh, fold points on this have a, a nice sweep to it that protects the wiring in these hinge points from being overly stressed which was a concern about some other panels that I looked at before buying this one that seem to want to try and compress this and make it as flat as possible. You want to uh, kind of maintain that, that curve there and not try and squeeze this together. That might uh, that might weaken the wiring a little bit. Um, specs are all fine and good, but uh, how did this guy actually uh, perform and how do we measure that? Uh, the way we measure that is by actually taking some some measurements. Uh, the first thing that I tried to do the, the night that I got the, the panel in the mail was I discharged this uh, storage battery, this RAF Power 10,000 milliamp unit. I discharged it with an iPad Air. Uh, plugged up that USB storage pack directly to the solar panel the following day. Got out there really early in the morning. And uh, my expectation was is that the, the uh, storage pack would be mostly, if not all the way, charged at the end of the day. And I went out every uh, every little bit and readjusted the solar panel angle, made sure I kept it at right angles to the sun. And at the end of the day, I wasn't even to the third bar. You can see it's flashing on the fourth one right now, indicating that that's the charge stage. I only had uh, two two bars with one flashing. So it would never go all the way to that third bar. I didn't know if my solar panel was not putting out what it says it should put out or if my storage pack was not taking as much current as the panel could put out. So I have a uh, USB extension cable that I've hacked up a little bit by exposing the red positive power leg where I can put some uh, alligator clips on it and I clip that to a multimeter set on DC amps and you can see that I'm charging this battery pack straight from the wall using a uh, 2.4 amp Apple iPad charger and I'm getting 0.8 uh, 69 amps or 690 milliamps. That is the exact same number as I was getting off of the panel yesterday. That means that the pack just won't take any more than 690 milliamps from any charging source. And so uh, the fault was not in the Voltaic Systems panel. Uh, it was that this battery just, for whatever reason, even though it says on the specifications that the input is one amp it's clearly not drawing uh, one amp 
some of you may say, well, as lithium-ion batteries uh, near full charge, they lower the charge current somewhat. Uh, I was still somewhere between 50 and 75 percent full when I first tried this, and I was getting the same number. So it should not have been at the point of the charge cycle where it drops significantly. I've never been able to get this over 690 milliamps for this battery pack. So the, uh, the next question was the iPad. I still had a little bit of sun left, so I plugged my iPad directly into my uh, solar panel, and it started charging. Uh, at that time, I hadn't cut up my USB cable yet, so I didn't have a way to measure the current just yet. But as a way of reference off of the uh, stock Apple wall adapter, with it being 80% charged, it's drawing uh, 1.3 amps out of the wall. A little bit less when the screen dims. Uh, at 80%, it's kind of nearing the upper end of its charge cycle, so it is going to slack off the current a little bit. It's not going to draw the full 2 amps um, that the specifications call for through the entire char charge cycle. I'm going to show a video clip after after this introduction that shows this iPad charging in the sun at 0 0.95 amps or 950 milliamps. Now that's direct sun at the time of day when it should be the brightest. Uh, I tried several different solar panel angles. Could not get the iPad to accept any more than right at an amp. So just like my storage pack we have a question, is it the panel or is it the iPad? Uh, the panel can produce 1400 milliamps. Right now it's only drawing one point, uh, just under 1.3 amps. Uh, so that should be within the range of what this guy can put out. You know, that, at least that's what my thought was at the time. I did some research and I found out that Apple devices have three charging tiers that they try and classify when you introduce a charge source. It's half an amp, one amp, and two amps. Uh, 1400 milliamps is not quite one and a half amps, so an iPad is never going to detect this as a two amp charge source, which means that it is only going to draw an amp from this, even though it says that it can output more. Um, I'm okay with that. I'll tell you why. Uh, that gives this a little bit of headroom, so if the sun dims a little bit from a passing cloud or, or whatnot, that there should be some reserve capacity in this so that if the current drops a little bit, it's still going to hopefully provide that one amp to the iPad. Uh, like we talked about, the device isn't going to draw the full two amps of current through its entire charging cycle. Right now it's only drawing 1.26 uh, amps. So in full sun, charging this from this at an amp isn't going to adversely impact their performance uh, quite as much. If, if the battery was more empty and it was trying to draw two amps, then you'd see a bit of a performance difference. But uh, an amp is, is what you're going to get out of this. And uh, the, the point is is that this iPad will charge from the voltaic solar panel, uh, which is a feat in and of itself. Uh, direct device charging from a solar panel is uh, really hard to do if you don't have a regulated output. Like I said, that's one of the reasons I chose this panel. So for way of reference, uh, this iPhone 5, let's plug it up, see what it's going to take. Right now, with it being 76% full, it's drawing 1.86, or I'm sorry, 0.86 amps. Which means that for charging an iPhone that's meant to be charged at an amp uh, maximum, that this 8 watt solar panel is going to do just fine and charge uh, optimally and be able to supply as much current as this iPhone needs. I think that charging an iPad from this uh, probably isn't its uh, point of use. So 
I think a phone is a little bit more reasonable expectation for this, but the point is is that you, you can in fact charge an iPad uh, from this panel. It'll just take a little bit longer. So let's look at the footage of the, uh, the solar testing. All right, yesterday, for the first time, I was testing my Voltaic Systems ARC 8-watt solar panel. And I was uh, disappointed that it did not charge my, uh, my little RAV power, power bank. It was completely discharged. It wouldn't make it uh, even to the third bar after a whole day in the sun. Uh, I was thinking that even though I was tracking the sun, maybe the panel wasn't outputting what it said it could output. So I chopped up a USB extender to where I could put a amp meter on it and discovered that it was charging at only uh, just under 700 milliamps. Um, I thought maybe the, uh, the power pack was getting too hot and that's why it was charging so low. So um, I made sure it was good and cool, came out here today, and it's still only charging at 700 milliamps. And so the question became, is it the solar panel not putting out the 1.4 uh, amps that it says it's capable of, or is that USB power pack not charging? So what I have done is I've taken my iPad Air, and I'm going to unplug my USB power pack Let's see the amperage reading went to zero and plug in my iPad and it it is charging at just under an amp the iPad is 86 percent full I've got it playing a, uh, a YouTube video right now so it will continuously draw power but this proves that the uh, the ARC 8 watt solar panel will put out uh, at least about an amp. I don't have a higher higher drain device to test test with, but uh, this is uh, it should have about 400 milliamp capacity to spare with this. I did the calculations for that RAV power unit, and at a 10,000 uh, milliamp battery. Uh, charging at 700 milliamps it's going to take roughly 15 hours to charge that guy which was uh, disappointing but I'm glad to know that it's not the voltaic system solar panel that is the problem it looks like it's a problem with the power pack itself and uh, for those who are interested let me show you how I'm rigging this up to test simply got a USB extender cable that I have cut the red wire out of the cable loom. I have some alligator clips attached to it going to my multimeter probes. And my multimeter is set on uh, DC amps. So I may actually be getting some extra resistance and loss in this test setup. And so it's actually possible that the iPad could charge faster and with more current than what it's drawing right now. But I think on this 28-gauge uh, USB extender going through a multimeter, seeing almost an amp of current out of the solar panel is actually really encouraging. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start researching some better USB power banks that that will charge better and, and might pair better with this this panel. And uh, th this also goes to show that the ARC 8 watt panel will charge a Apple iPad, iPad Air. The lightning connection, obviously. So, there's my review.